Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. So today will be a demo of the uh, Threat R app in Vizar. So just to, <coughs> in case you didn't, in case you didn't come to the last session of Vizar uh, demo, so Vizar is a Java-based uh, platform uh, that contains a lot of uh, Java apps as well as many R apps. So these. So these R apps uh, allows the users to uh, uh, use R packages as well as uh, R functions without having to go into the R console. So it's a more user-friendly uh, version of using R. <coughs> so today we'll be talking about the Surat uh, R app. So just a brief overview of the Surat R package, which is developed by the Satija lab. Uh, it's a very commonly used uh, single cell, uh, a single cell uh, a sequencing analysis tool. So the tutorials uh, for uh, this R package can be found on this website. Uh, so as a brief overview, the general workflow is very similar to the cell ranger R kit uh, uh, R package. So it involves the uh, uh, input of an uh, expression matrix, which is a uh, uh, typically contains the, either the count or the uh, UM accounts or recounts. Uh, uh, so after inputting the expression matrix, we do some data pre-processing by uh, filtering the data or normalizing the data, scaling the data, etc. After that, we re uh, reduce uh, all the genes into a few dimensions that captures most of the uh, features for each cell. Uh, after that, we use the uh, reduced dimensions to cluster cells and perform the dimension uh, uh, differential expression analysis uh, on these clusters to help us uh, draw uh, meaningful biological inferences. <coughs> so since uh, some steps in this uh, 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 workflow takes a long time, so we will use a combination of live demo of this rare app as well as, well as some uh, pre-generated figures to uh, illustrate how the R app works. <coughs> so first we open the Vizar <coughs> and we can search for Surat here. So alternatively we can also go to uh, the sequencing folder and the <coughs> single cell so we can see all the single cell R apps here. Oh, this test and it's a uh, it's it might be, it's not on the website. So don't worry about that. <coughs> so we have Cell Ranger Arcade, which, which was uh, uh, demonstrated last time, and the uh, Surat here, as well as uh, Monaco, which is still work in progress. So we drag the Surat into the main panel. So in the main panel, well, uh, we will see the dis display of uh, plots that's generated uh, after each run. <coughs> and on the right-hand side, uh, it contains the parameters and options that we can set <coughs> for this R app. <coughs> so first, we will choose the workflow. So we can either choose to uh, perform a, a standard uh, dimension uh, <coughs> uh, a clustering and the differential expression analysis of one uh, single cell data set, or we can do an integrated analysis in, in case we have uh, two uh, different data sets with different experimental conditions. So currently it only supports up, uh, supports up to two different data sets. <coughs> so to start with, we'll first <coughs> uh, use the analysis of one data set. <coughs> and so, uh, uh, so for the input options, we can either load in the cell ranger pipeline output, so it's the folder which contains an out folder, uh, or we can load in a SRA object. So since we don't have any SRA object now, we can load in the uh, cell ranger pipeline output. So we click on the three uh, dots and it uh, allows us to browse our directories. <laughs> so I have a so uh, it's a PBMC 3K, so it's provided by Tanis Genomics. <laughs> so when we open the folder, we can see that it contains the outs folder. We will not select the outs folder. We use the, the uh, folder that's one level above. So we can click open, and it will be here. <laughs> so it 
and the next section is banded, uh, we choose the <coughs> output folder. <coughs> we can store our, all our outputs in a single folder called, just called output. So here are two options. It says we can either create a new subdirectory <coughs> or, or not, but we uh, check this uh, checkbox by default so as to prevent uh, the uh, old files uh, from being overwritten by the uh, files gener generated from the new run. And the subdirectory uh, will be named <coughs> after the current date and time. <coughs> and another option is that we can choose to save the output threat object or not. So we uh, recommend that saving it every time. But for some steps that didn't make any changes to the object itself, we can deselect this option uh, so as to say, uh, save some time because uh, if the threat object is very large, then it could take uh, quite some time to save it. <coughs> so after uh, specifying the output directory, we can now create a threat object from the Syringe uh, pipeline output. So if uh, we, so these are the parameters that we can uh, adjust. And no upper limit basically just means that it's <coughs> uh, there's no upper bound on the on this value. <coughs> if we describe this, we can change the value here. <coughs> so click run, and uh, it was start to create uh, the threat object as well as perform the filtering step based on these uh, uh, parameters. So we can see the progress here. Uh, based on the print, uh, printout. So it's now loading the data and creating the object. <coughs> now, another place to see the output is from the console. So it shows uh, both the outputs, uh, print outputs, as well as the code that's being executed. And in fact, we can even see the uh, source code from the code section here. So now after the run finishes, we can see uh, on the main screen, it displays a plot. But in case that there are multiple plots uh, generated from a single run, or if we, uh, or another possibility that we select the multiple steps and run them at the same time, so there will be multiple plots generated, uh, this plot will be only the last plot generated uh, during the, a single run. And as for the rest of the plots, we can see there is a PDF file generated containing all the plots. <coughs> so as a brief summary table. <coughs> so all the output files can now be found inside this output folder named uh, with name uh, with the current date and time. So if we go inside this folder, <coughs> we can see several files. So this is basically just the plots that were previously shown. So this contains all the parameters that were specified during this run and uh, the cells. Uh, th this file contains the, uh, all the information that's available for each cell. So as we progress through, the, uh, as more information is being added into uh, the thread object, uh, we will see more, uh, more columns being added <coughs> to uh, this file. And also another is the threat RDS, which is the threat object. You can load uh, this object into your own customized uh, R script using a read RDS function and for uh, your customized analysis. <coughs> and uh, this object can also be directly loaded into a uh, Vizar uh, threat R app uh, using the load, <coughs> using this load uh, threat object uh, option, so that uh, if we already performed a, uh, a lot of uh, analysis steps uh, before, and uh, we can directly load this uh, threat object so that it does not rerun the previous uh, uh, the, uh, steps as already being computed. <coughs> so <coughs> now since we already created a threat object, we can change the imp import method to a uh, low threat object and uh, <coughs> can again browse from the three dots. 
So go to the previous, uh, the output folder from the previous run and load in the threat object. <coughs> so now we can choose which sub uh, subsequent uh, step we want to run. So the first will be find variable genes. Uh, it's a quick step, so I'll just show here. <coughs> Again, the <coughs> corresponding parameters uh, are exposed, so we can change them uh, as we want. If we click run, then start running. So we can see the output PDF files already generated. And our screen shows the plot for the variable genes as well, with the uh, dots that are being labeled. Uh, the dots that are being labeled with the gene name uh, are the variable genes that we have selected. So if we are happy with the result, uh, then we can proceed with uh, the follow, uh, subsequent steps. If we are not, we can, then we can just adjust the <coughs> steps here, uh, adjust the parameters here to rerun this step. So actually, it's the similar for each step we run. So once we are uh, content with the result of one step, so we can go into the load threat object and change our uh, input threat object into the one that we want. <coughs> so since the, the following steps are dimension linearity reduction and the cluster cells, uh, they take some, quite some time to run, so I was just use my slides for that to show the results. <coughs> so here's the dimensionality reduction. So we use PCE for that, and then we can specify the number of <coughs> PCs here. This is the initial number of PCs to be computed. And then output plot of viewing the, uh, all the cells on the PC1 and PC2 projections. And to determine how many of the, these PCs are actually significant, we have uh, the threat provided three uh, methods of, of choosing number of PCs. So first is Jack's draw, which each PC have an associated number of p-value, so we can choose where to cut off uh, based on the p-value. <laughs> and then the screen plot. Uh, so basically, we, uh, <coughs> it plots the variance of each PC, and we can try to see where the uh, elbow of this plot is, so where it starts to level off. And so once the PC heat map, so it plots like how uh, how each PC is uh, driving the extreme genes and cells apart. We can see that as <coughs> as the PC number goes up, uh, the difference between the two extremes becomes less uh, obvious. So in all, all these three steps, we will input an object uh, containing the PC results. So this object can be generated from the previous run of run PC. It can also be generated from your own script. <coughs> After that, we run a TSNI, which is, makes it easier to visualize all the cells. And the next step, we <coughs> So actually, uh, just to mention that in the run TSNI step, we provide an option of automatically uh, uh, calculate the number of PCs to use. <coughs> so if you choose, uh, just want to have a quick run through, uh, you can uh, choose this option so that you don't have to specify the number of PCs. But if you choose to run the previous three steps and the one to specify PCs yourself, you can just uncheck it, <coughs> uncheck this option, and you can specify a number here. 
After that, we cluster the cells based on the PCA results. Uh, it also says TSNE results here, <coughs> so that it can be plotted on this TSNE, uh, on the TSNE1, TSNE2 projections. Uh, if it, uh, we didn't run the TSNE before, then, you, uh, <coughs> then the cells will be plotted on the uh, PC1 and PC2 projections, but it's uh, less, uh, uh, it's harder to visualize on the PC scales, and as the cells are more well, so, uh, separated on the uh, TSD projections. So again, for the clustering step, we have the option to automatically compute the number of PCs, and it's recommended that you probably don't want to use that <laughs> and uh, specify the number of PCs yourself. So after we have the, after we have the cell clusters, we can perform the differential expression analysis on these uh, clusters to help us uh, identify like, which cell type each cluster uh, corresponds to. So we have two options here. The first is to compare each cluster to the rest of the cells. So it's all done at the same time. Another option is to, you can choose two specific clusters to compare against each other, or you can specify two groups of clusters. So essentially here, it says only three, but if you want to say, uh, uh, compare all the cells within groups uh, in clusters three and uh, five against all uh, uh, cells in cluster four and uh, six, and you can just use a comma separate list of cluster names. If you don't specify anything within a group two, then assume that uh, we are comparing group one against <coughs> all the other cells uh, in this data set. And <coughs> in the following, it also has some other options. <coughs> so for example, there's a differential expression <coughs> test method. So we can see from here. We click differential expression analysis. <coughs> so in the test method, it offers the options to choose a different, uh, a different uh, statistical test method uh, that's offered by the threat package. <coughs> so after running the differential expression analysis step, uh, a file, a new file will be generated within the results folder. So it's called, I think the name is very uh, obvious. <coughs> so we can actually import this. Uh, so this file uh, is actually a, a, a tab separated a file. So it's in a table format. We can load uh, this uh, file into uh, into Vizar for viewing the content. <coughs> so I can show you. <coughs> so we can try to load in some pre-computed results here. So to load in a uh, table, you can use the add table option and open table. And here in our example output, <coughs> We can load in differential expression. Yeah. And we can use a table uh, and a built in app called a table view to help us see the content of this file. <coughs> so here we can see that we can make. can see the can filter this table by so, so if we filter the table by its cluster we can uh, see all the genes that are differentially expressed in say cluster one or five or eight.
and we can also uh, <coughs> adjust some filter for the, say, the p-value or the adjusted p-value, or maybe the percentage difference between our uh, target group and the, the group for comparison. So this this file can, uh, the TSV uh, file can also be uh, manip manipulate, uh, manipulated in any type of spreadsheet software, such as uh, Simple Swans Excel. So it's quite easy to uh, manipulate and uh, visualize. <coughs> so now, uh, oh, we we'll also want to introduce an app <coughs> called Upset. <coughs> uh, I think we introduced it in our last session about the Cell Ranger, our app. <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, we have added some new features to this one, so I will uh, still show it here. So Upset is an alternative to a uh, Venn diagram. Uh, it can help us uh, view the uh, number of uh, the size of the intersections between different sets. But for a Venn diagram, when the number of sets exceeds, say, three, it becomes very messy to visualize. But the uh, upset can provide a much clearer view of that. So, for example, in <coughs> this plot here, so the first part shows the number of genes that, uh, that are differentially expressed only in each in each class uh, only so it's in this case this uh, it shows the number of genes that are differentially expressed in this cluster but not in any other clusters and in the following ones it shows the number of uh, genes that are differentially expressed in exactly these two or these two clusters so to generate such a plot, we first search for the upset app. And drag it to the middle. <coughs> and we can drag the table to the middle as well. <coughs> and can choose the input type. So this is uh, the format at which the uh, genes and the clusters are laid out. So I'll provide an example here. So for the threat output, uh, if we choose to uh, 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 perform differential, uh, differential expression on all the clusters, uh, then we will get a table that's <coughs> similar in this format, where one column is the number of genes and another, another column contains <coughs> their uh, corresponding clusters. And uh, <coughs> so we call this ID set coordinates uh, format. And another, another format, which is uh, the cell render R apps uh, output for different differential expression, is something like a truth table where the <coughs> row, each row is a gene and each column is a cluster. And uh, if the entry is one here, it means the string is differentially expressed in cluster zero. Uh, if it's zero here, then it means uh, the string is not differentially expressed in this cluster. <coughs> so in this case, we <coughs> use the output from the thre uh, thread. So we choose the ID set combination as the input tag. <coughs> and the, the ID columns will be the genes, and the sets are the clusters. I can also try to output a binary encoded table, <coughs> just in case we want to have an alternative view of that. <coughs> so we'll call it run. <coughs> now we have such a table. <coughs> so currently, the max number of <coughs> uh, intersections being plotted is 40. We can adjust this value as needed or we can choose a different way of ordering these uh, intersections. Currently, orders by the degree first, so uh, the intersections of one data set only, an intersection between uh, one set only, or the intersection between two sets only. So if we order by
good order them by frequency, then uh, you order by the number of counts in each section. Oh, sorry. Oh, so this axis uh, represents the sets, uh, or in this case, there are clusters. So here it's cluster two. A little bit small to see. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. It's the axis option. So these are the all the clusters generated from the our clustering step. <laughs> so we can see a cluster two, zero, four, three, eight, seven, one, six, five. <laughs> so these are all the clusters. And uh, like this dot uh, means that this uh, bar it represents <laughs> the count of all of the number of differentially uh, expressed genes in this uh, in this cluster. So these are all similar. Uh, this is a uh, number of differentially expressed genes in cluster eight. And uh, for things like this, it means uh, the number of differentially expressed genes, a uh, number of genes that are differentially expressed only in uh, cluster one and the five, but not in any other clusters. So it's a strict uh, intersection. And here we can also see that there are three dots here. So that means <laughs> that it represents the number of uh, genes that are differentially expressed in these three clusters, but not in any other clusters. And the bars here represents uh, the number of genes that are differentially expressed in, say, in cluster two, but it does not consider uh, whether it's differentially expressed in other clusters or not. <clears throat> so the, does that explain? Okay, all right, thanks. <clears throat> so this is all for the upset. It could be a, I think it could be a useful way of viewing the, say, the relationship between different clusters. So if, say, there are a lot of shared uh, differentially ex uh, expressed genes between two clusters, and maybe we can say that uh, these two clusters are uh, very closely related, or even we should maybe put them into the same cluster. <laughs> so this is all for the... <clears throat> so up until the differential expression, uh, we already finished the, like, the uh, general workflow for single cell analysis. In the following parts, we have some additional options. So one of them is called rename the clusters. So maybe after we <laughs> finish the differential uh, expression analysis, we already know the identity of some clusters, and we want to rename them to <laughs> their corresponding cell types. <laughs> we can use this option and provide a list of the current cluster ID names, and they are usually just numbers from zero to uh, whatever the number of <coughs> cluster is, and uh, can rename them by the <coughs> cell type. And after that, in the output, you can see that <coughs> clusters three and four have been renamed to B cells and uh, CDA T cells. <coughs> so another option we provide is <coughs> called the visualized genes. So there are five. <coughs> there are five uh, uh, gene visualization functions provided by SRAT. So we put them all as the 
uh, options here. <coughs> so we can provide a list of genes that we want to visualize. Uh, there are, maybe there are the marker genes that we found during the differential analysis uh, step. So we can put in a comma separate list of genes here. <coughs> and uh, in the following, uh, well, uh, the following section will be expanded to <coughs> show the five different plotting options. The first is scalar plot, where we plot the cells on the TSNE projections. Uh, uh, colored by their expression. And that's why it's a volume plot. So this is useful to uh, realize the distrib uh, distribution of the uh, gene expressions within each cluster. <coughs> and we also have a dot plot <coughs> where the each uh, dot is colored by their uh, average expression within a cluster, uh, and the size of the dot uh, represents the percentage of cells within the cluster that uh, express this gene. And uh, so we have a rich plot, which is very similar to a uh, volume plot, but it's just uh, tilts to become horizontal. <coughs> also, we have a heat map where the cells are grouped by their clusters, and we can visualize their, uh, visualize the uh, expression of each, each gene by, the, uh, by their colors. <coughs> so this is all for the first workflow that we showed, which is the analysis of one data set. <coughs> so in the set, the following part, we will show the workflow for, oh, actually, yeah, there's one more part. So after, so after we run the <coughs> visualization of the gene expression step, <coughs> we'll see that the <coughs> gene expression values have been added to the, uh, to the, to the cells.tsv file that we have seen in the output folder. So we can try to load it, load that file into the, into Vizar. <coughs> so as an example, <coughs> can again realize uh, we can <coughs> check this file inside the uh, inside table view app in the bazaar. I see that now, since like, the three object already contains the PCA results and TSNE results and the cluster information, so it includes all these columns, as well as the uh, gene expression values that we selected to uh, plot. And if we want to uh, do a customized plot, uh, more spe uh, specifically a, a customized uh, scatter plot, we can use another a built-in uh, Java app in <coughs> Bizarre. Can search for scatter. And you can see the scatter plot here. <coughs> Drag the table to the middle. <coughs> and here we can select which axis do we want to uh, plot on. And uh, so we want to plot on, say, the TSNE projections. <coughs> TSNE 2 here and TSNE 1 here. So cells now are on the <coughs> TSNE projections. I can color the cells by, say, their cluster ID. Or we can color them by <coughs> the gene expression level. I can also change the colors here. So this is all for uh, <coughs> yeah, example <coughs> price also shown on the slides. <coughs> so this is all for our <coughs> uh, <coughs> analysis of one single data set uh, workflow. So next we can uh, quickly go through the uh, integrate analysis workflow. <coughs> so <coughs> we will use this part uh, if, uh, if we have two data sets that <coughs> Uh, consists of mostly uh, very similar cell types, 
but have undergone different exper uh, experimental conditions. <coughs> so <coughs> to do that, we want to merge the two data sets together and find the common cell types uh, uh, between the two data sets. Uh, <coughs> so the first step is to merge <coughs> the two data sets. So here we'll provide the option of, <coughs> let's see, go back here. <coughs> so integrate analysis. <coughs> so we have the option of either loading two uh, different uh, threat objects. Each of them uh, should already contain the uh, variable genes uh, information. Uh, so if we don't have that, we can uh, go to the first workflow to generate the variable genes information. So we can go <coughs> here and uh, <coughs> click on the find variable genes, then we can get a, a, a cell a get containing the variable genes. <coughs> so once we have these objects, uh, we can load them <coughs> separately into, uh, into <coughs> the second workflow and uh, the output will be <coughs> the output will be a, a merged threat object uh, containing the data from both input objects. <coughs> so simply merging the two threat objects is usually usually not enough for this integrated analysis. <coughs> so that's because effect. So as we can see as an example here, so uh, these uh, cells are plotted on the T-SNE scale that's generated from uh, the PCA results. And we can see that the t uh, cells from the two uh, data sets are somewhat, uh, are actually very uh, well separated already. So which means that batch effect will play, uh, become a driving force in their clustering. So instead of being clustered based on their cell types, they will be clustered first by their uh, experimental conditions, which is not what we want. <laughs> so uh, in order to remove the batch effect, we, so the threat uh, workflow provides an uh, option to use CCA instead of PCA. Or dimensionality reduction. This is the output of CCA readouts. So uh, the cells are plotted on CCA1 versus CC2, and we can see. <coughs> and to choose the number of CCs for subsequent steps. Uh, <coughs> We use a biocross-saturation plot, which is very similar to a scree plot, uh, where we <coughs> want to find the elbow or where the, uh, this line, uh, this plot starts to level off. <coughs> and then we align the CCA results <coughs> and use the <coughs> CCA. So these are very similar to uh, <clears throat> to the previous workflow, the analysis of one data set. Also a cluster based on the CC results. of clusters. And the uh, additional option provided by this workflow is to find the differential exp exp uh, experimental conditions of the two data set, uh, sets. <coughs> we can do uh, specify a single cluster here and the they will find the, differ uh, the genes are differentially expressed uh, between the two, uh, 
between the cells are run to different special uh, experimental conditions within the same cluster. Okay, so that's all for today. Okay, thank you very much for coming. I think one of the main points is that uh, instead of, if you're not already proficient in R, instead of having to learn R, you can focus on the stats and the defaults that you need to pick, and you can take those on first. Um, and then BizR also gives you some options to play with R code as well. Um, if you do know R, you can bypass some of the tedious scripting and quickly kind of autom use this as an automation system to get to your position in the end. Uh, and then the other nice thing is that the Vizar platform gives you an interactive um, uh, workspace to actually plot data, use other R tools, uh, and, and all these sorts of things. So um, hopefully in the next month or so, Hamid's going to give uh, the third installment of, of this uh, Vizar presentation um, looking at Monocle. Um, but a big part is also getting you guys access. So. Um, if anybody needs help getting this going, um, certainly get a hold of us, and, and we'll, we'll try to do it. Um, I think Hamid in the last demo went over the, the help tab in Bizar. <coughs> yeah, I can show that. Okay. Um, <coughs> so here uh, there's a help. You can report bugs or suggest features here. <coughs> so it's a, it's a survey form that you can fill out that, so that we can see. Yeah, and then you may have noticed we were also recording, so we'll try to make these resources, the slides and the um, video, available for, for you to reference when you actually start getting data going through, because uh, probably the best way to learn this stuff is actually to try and put data through and, and play with it and see what you can do. Um, I don't know, do you want to say anything about this or the platform right now? try to do is to fill in parameters to the default that come from the tutorial or the package. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, that's the reality of the thing. You know, the package have many parameters. So we try not to hide that those parameters are there. Uh, but then, and if they're initialized with the default, that stays with those. So if you specifically need to you know, like play with the, with the parameters, at least uh, you have a reference to, okay, if it's this parameter, you can go to the Torah um, phone and manual and then see what the specifics are about that parameter. Usually the parameter, uh, there's a tooltip and they go for some of the parameters. Like, and so the tooltip comes from yeah. the... Yeah, so if you hover the mouse over... Yeah. So, so, so for these, these tooltips also come from usually the R manual for that so there's like the initial thing to get it going, but um, the re that's the sort of a reality. We are trying to tackle that with another sort of a, a software, a, the, the problem of parameters. But, um, but if, if basically uh, there's too much, uh, we recommend just to run it to the default, see how, how it looks like. Then maybe uh, look at the documentation. At least, um, and also in the, soon uh, we're going to add the feature to have a direct link to documentation for the stats. So you can just click and then open the PDF for the. Um, oh, yeah. I just like feedback on that. So for sure, like lots of parameters and stuff. But from doing this, the, the main ones you need to focus on. Filtering your data first, so this is actually looking at your distribution of the number of genes, the number of GMI counts, stuff like that, um, the number of control components, the resolution of your uh, cluster. Like everything else, scaling, differential expression, everything like that, those are totally fine left to default and like people regularly publish with those defaults. But the things you do want to focus on is filtering, number of control components, and the resolution of your cluster. Okay. Yeah. 
also that's why we break this into like, a distinct steps so that <coughs> after you perform one step, you can adjust the parameters until you are satisfied somewhat and you won't lose the information from the previous run. <laughs> Any other questions at this time then? Uh, well, thanks for coming out. <laughs> uh, we'll hang out for a little bit here, so if anybody has questions or any